멕시코 선교 잘 다녀왔어요. We are one piece from Mexico. 아직 세 사람들이 이 비행기를 그 놓쳐갖고 지금 어제 돌아왔어그 산골로 들어 들어가 들어가야 되고 또 이제 나오다가 도시쯤 오면 이게 막 트래픽이 한번 걸렸다 막. 한 3시간 거리가 5시간이 되기도 하고 막 이러기 때문에 아마 그렇게 된것 같아요. Uh, and so because the, the mission area where they were is in such a remote location they had to go through so many different pathways and, uh, and, and mountains to get there uh, it, it ended up taking a little bit longer so they ended up missing 하나님이 거기 잠깐 좀 하루 더 있어야 될 이유가 있으니까 이렇게 하셨겠죠 and I'm sure that God allowed that to happen because there's a reason why God intends for them to be there an extra day uh, 오늘 그 제목이 그러나 죽을 것도 각오하였노라 이런 고백입니다. And the scripture that we see today in, in, uh, is, uh, in the message that we want to share as a result is, but I am ready also to die. 여러분은 하나님 앞에 반드시 응답받고 축복을 누려야 될 사람들입니다. And so you and I absolutely are people who must receive, enjoy blessings from God. 그 여러 가지 이유가 있죠. And of course there are many reasons for that. 가장 근본적 이유는 말 그대로 여러분이 구원받았기 때문입니다. And the most fundamental reason behind all of that is because of the simple fact that you and I are saved. 예, 구원은 우리가 뭐 단순히 죽어서 천국 가는 것으로 예, 끝나는 게 아닙니다. Uh, and salvation isn't just simply a matter of uh, you know going and going to heaven after you die. 예, 여러분이 이 땅에 살아가면서 정말 천국 가기 전에 천국 같은 삶을 살다 가야 돼요. And while we're living our lives here on earth before we end up going into heaven we live a life like heaven here on earth. 여러분 구원은 뭡니까? So what is salvation? 하나님의 아들이신 그리스도께서 자기의 피로 어, 우리에게 있었던 근본 저주를 해결하신 겁니다. It's the fact that the son of God himself came to us, shed his own blood and solved our fundamental curse. 인생이 자기도 모르게 착하게 열심히 살고 몸부림치며 살면서도 이해할 수 없는 고통과 저주 속에 살 수밖에 없었던 그 근본에서부터 해방받은 게 구원입니다. And when we look at situations where we try so hard and we try make such an effort and put in so much diligence to try to make our lives work out well, but even then, incomprehensibly, things don't work out. The very reason why that happens, Christ came to solve that reason. 그리스도가 해결하신 그 근본이 뭡니까? So what's the fundamental reason behind what Christ came to do? 그게 원죄요 사단이요 지옥이요. That that in and of itself is is original sin is Satan and it's hell. 여러분 한 사람 아담 때문에 죄와 저주가 세상에 들어왔다는 거예요. This concept of original sin because of one man Adam, sin and curses. And Entered into the world. 그 그것이 세대와 세대를 거쳐서 generation to generation 우리까지 왔어요. And then we see that it passed down generation after generation, and now it's come on to 그러니까 us. 그러니까 태어날 때부터 불행이 시작되고 살아가는 것이 고통인 거예요. And that's the very reason why, even from the moment we were born, even unhappiness and, and, and problems and things like that began from that moment on. 그것이 대를 이어서 계속 되어지니까 우리가 가문의 대물립니다. 저주다 운명이다 이런 말들 하는 거예요. because those kinds of things continue to persist in our lives that's the reason why we call it you know inheritance or, or, or spiritual inheritance or different kind of problems like that. 구원은요 이 원죄의 저주에서 빠져나와 여러분이 축복의 근원이 되는 거예요. salvation becomes the fundamental blessing through which we come out of this very problem of original sin. 이번에 우리가 갔던 그 장소는 어한 5년 전에 우리 교회가 어, 여기서 이제 전도해서 훈련시켜 갖고 평신도 선교사로 파송한 훈리오가 있는 그 지역입니다. And the place that we went to in Mexico this time around was uh, the region where uh, uh, an individual a former member of our church named Julio who we commissioned as a uh, as a lay leader lay person missionary five years ago uh, resides. 저는 이번에요. 거기 가서 아, 한 사람이 바뀌면 그 가문을 살리고 그 지역과 그 모든 교회를 살린다는 것을 아주 똑똑히 확인하고 왔어요. And so while I was there in Mexico, I, I so accurately confirmed the fact that when one person lives, that entire family, that entire region can come to life. 그 지역은 멕시코 중에서도 가장 산골으로 들어가서 있는 인디오 마을이라고 보는 그런 산골 지역이요. And that place where we went to in Mexico is in one of the more remote areas of Mexico where there's it's just simply a small native village. 사실은 아무도 아무것도 희망이 없는 그런 지역의 사람들이죠. And it's really a place where so many people just don't have a whole lot of hope. 그 주변에 그 헬스 디파트먼 병원 하나도 없기 때문에 보건소도 없기 때문에 뭐 어디 아프면 어, 거기서 차를 타고 한참 나와야 돼. 몇 시간을 나와야 돼요. And because of the location of that village and, and the fact that there aren't there aren't any health centers or anything like that around there, if someone gets sick, then they have to travel for hours and hours just to receive medical help. 전부 다 가난, 무지, 
막 이런 질병 이런 속에서 사실은 어렵게 살아야 되는 사람들이거든요. And these people who are people who are realistically living in the midst of issues such as uh, poverty, famine, disease. 근데 지역은 진짜 멋있더라고요. But you know if you look at the the region itself, the place itself, it's very classy. 아, 그냥, 그냥 그 꼬물꼬물해서 들어가니까 세상 에 이렇게 멋있는 동네도 있는가 할 정도로 산이 있고 강이 있고 하는데. 야, 내가 무슨 무슨 이제 리조트 온줄 알았어. And so you go through all these different winding roads just to get to where you, where you need to go, but when you finally get there, you see, you know, these beautiful mountains and a valley and a river and things like that. And I, I never knew that there was something so beautiful. 그런 환경을 갖고 있으면 뭐 하냐고요. Uh, and, and it almost looked like a res, like a resort. I was at a resort, but then I thought to myself, 그 이어서 가난 고통 저주가 계속 되는 거예요. You can have all these kinds of nice things, but what does it matter when, you know, generation after generation you have these cur- curses coming down? 여기서 우리 이렇게 살수 없다 하고 정처 없이 걸어서 나와 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 온게 미국으로 돌아온 사람들이요. And so, so, so there are so many people who come from that village saying we cannot live like this any longer, and then they travel and then try to en- come and enter into America. 서로 약속은 한건 아닌데 그 마을에서 걸어서 미국까지 들어와서 지금 우리 교인이 된 사람이 일곱 명이요, 세가네 가정 일곱 명이요. And so it's not that they made some kind of promise or anything like that, but so strangely, uh, there are people who came from that very, you know, that exact village in uh, that remote area of Mexico, and there's seven, six or seven members uh, from that village who are attending our church. 그리고 우리 스페니시 교인들 부모 만나서 신방 다 했다니까요. And so even our Hispanic ministry members, you know, those people met their own parents and they evangelized all of their parents. 근데 이 훌리오가 어떤 사람이었냐? But what kind of individual was this? 우리가 평신도 선교사로 파송했잖아요. This individual Julio, who used to be at a church, we commissioned him as a layperson missionary. <웃음> 희망이 없으니까 늘술 먹고 살던 사람이라는 거예요. And he was an individual who who lacked so much hope in his life that he uh, depended on alcohol for such a long time. 미국에서도 늘술 먹고 드렁큰으로 살고 있, 있는 것으로 생각했던 거죠. And so all he remembers of, of his time in America is just simply uh, constantly uh, um, uh, drinking. 네, 다시는 못볼줄 아는 거죠 그 가족들은요. And so his family didn't uh, didn't realize or thought that they would never see him again. 이 사람이 어느 날 돌아온 거예요. But one day he comes back home. 우리가 비행기표 사 갖고 해서 다 보냈잖아요 선교사로. And, and, and we supported them as a layperson missionary and we sent him back to uh, and we sent him to Mexico. 근데 돌아와 보니까 사람이 너무 다른 거야. But then you know he comes back home and then he, people realize that he's so different. 이 사람 때문에 전 가족이 행복하고. 전 가족이 하나님의 축복이 무엇인가를 본 거예요. Uh, and because of that one individual, the entire family, the entire area around him was able to see uh, how happy he was and also see the blessings of God. 어떻게 사람이 저렇게 바뀔 수 있냐? Uh, and they they thought to themselves, how could someone change like that? 어떻게 저렇게 하나님의 축복을 받을 수 있냐? How is it that someone like that could receive God's blessings like that? 그게 조용히 그 마을 주변에 조용히 영향을 준 거예요. And that slowly and very quietly gave influence to everyone around him. 거기다가 that 30대 초반에 아주 엘리트 목사가 그쪽으로 왔어요. And then uh, also right around the same time there's there's uh, there's a pastor in his early 30s who who went into that. 이분이 신학 대학의 교수로 잘 나갈 수 있는데 그 옛날에 그 마을에서 태어나서 그 마을에서 성장한 목사였던 거예요. And this pastor is someone who could have, you know, become a professor at a at a seminary or something like that or done, done something like that, but instead he came back home to to work as a pastor. 교수로서의 길이 열렸는데요. 그 교회에 그 시골 교회 장로님이 찾아와서 정말 아무도 우리에게 와주지 않는다. 목사님이 와주길 바란다. 해갖고 모든 걸 내려놓고 간 거예요. And this individual, this young pastor who's there right now in that Indian village, he's someone who had an opportunity to become a professor at a seminary, but instead uh, there was an elder at his church back in his own native village who came back and and asked them to come back because there weren't any pastors who would come. 그러니까 이 훌륭한 지금 이 목사님을 섬기면서 거기서 지금 사회를 하고 있는데. 2년 전에 우리 팀들이 갔을 때 교인 수 20명 한 30명 겨우 됐대요. And so that that the pastor he be, uh, he's coming back he came back to his home village and uh, Julio is serving under that very pastor and two years ago when we went there were maybe around 20 or 30 people at the church. 지금 멤버들이 잘하고 있어요. There, there were around 20 or 30 people at the church around two years ago. 한 but... 20명의 멤버들 다 모여 갖고 메시지를 받는데. 내 가슴이 다 뜨겁더라고. But now we see that there are so many young children, so many remnants who are being raised in that area, and 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 you know there are 20 or 30 remnants who are gathering together and uh, doing worship together, and it really touched my heart. 여기로 말하면 지금 구학년, 십학년 자리들이 자기 초등학생 아이들 걔들에게 메시지를 주고 가르칠 정도로 교사를 하고 사역자를 하고 있는 거예요. And so uh, you know just if you look at it from our terms, we see that the kids who are in their ninth or tenth grade age, they're they're bringing their 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 brothers and sisters in elementary school, and and, and they're at a level where they can give them a message. 집회를 하는 근데 난 놀랬어요. 
So they're having a conference, and I was surprised. 이 사람들이 이제 교회가 막 부흥하니까 점점점 자꾸 이제 콘크리트를 해갖고 막 교회를 막 늘려가고 있는 거예요. And so the church is continuing to grow and expand, so they're they're making a, you know a larger building. 한 150명 정도 들어가는 그 공간인데 그냥 꽉 차고 문 뒤에도 섰더라고. And so the the building itself is something that can only fit maybe around 150 people, but it was it was very packed full, and and there were people outside the door. 그러니까 한 사람이 축복받은 증거를 보니까 그게 조용히 영향을 준 거예요. So they saw one individual who received blessings from God and that slowly gave influence to everyone around them. 어떻게 한 사람이 이렇게 바뀔 수 있는 거냐? And everyone around them thought, how could one individual change like this? 그게 지역을 살리고 그게 교회를 살린다니까요. And that's something that can really change and save a region, a church. 여러분 운명 저주에서 빠져나왔다는 것은 어마어마한 얘기가 되는 거예요. And the fact that you and I have been brought out of sin, curses, and fate and destiny is a tremendous. 하나님이 나를 축복의 근원으로 삼았다고 하는 것은 내 가문 전체를 살리는 어마어마한 역사가 시작되는 거예요. And the fact that God has saved us and brought us out as a source of blessing is a is a mystery through which we through which we can save our entire household. 여러분 분명히 사단은 여러분이 착하게 살고 열심히 사는데 상관없이 역사하는 영이잖아요. And so we absolutely know that Satan is a spirit who always tries to bring us down regardless of how uh, uh, you know nicely or diligently we try to live our lives. 그러니까 이제 개인의 속에 가정 속에 여러분의 가문 속에 역사하면 이해할 수 없는 실패와 고통이 찾아온다니까요. And when Satan works inside the individual, inside the family, then even incomprehensible problems continue to come. 그 여러분 실 실제로 사단이 여러분 역사하면요. 내가 무슨 짓을 하는지를 모르는 채로 실패하는 길을 갑니다. And then all the more sometimes when Satan really works within us, he does he, he causes us to do things where we don't even understand what we're doing. 그리고 나중에 뭐 아니 내가 왜 그때 왜 그랬지? 이 정도가 돼. 그게 영적 문제라고 하는 거거든요. And later on down the road, you look back and you think to yourself, man, I don't even know why I did that. That's a spiritual. 아니 내가 왜 그때 그런 바보 같은 짓을 했지? And then some people think to themselves, oh, I don't know why I did such a foolish thing back then. 그게 사단이 역사해서 그런 거예요. That's because Satan is working. 불신자는 완전히 여기 잡혀 있는 거예요. And, and as a non-believer, you can be caught up in that. 그러니까 여러분 성공하고 세상적으로 잘 사는 것 같지만 결정적인 순간에 무너지는 일들을 하는 거예요. And that's why so many times, even as a non-believer, you, if it seems like everything's going well and you're becoming successful in the world from a worldly perspective but then one day you, you see that uh, destruction finds you. 여러분 거기서 빠져 나와서 거기서 승리할 사람이 됐다는 거예요. But we see that uh, we we've now become people who have come out of that people who have victory in the midst of that. 여러분 그러다 우리는 죽어야 되잖아요. Then after that we have to die. 그런데 우리에게는 영원한 심판이 기다리고 있는 게 아니라 영원한 상급과 영원한 생명이 기다리고 있는 거예요. But after we pass away, it's not that an eternal judgment awaits us, but we have an eternal reward that absolutely waits us. 여러분이요, 원죄, 운명, 지옥, 사단에서 해방받았다. 어마어마한 얘기가 되는 거예요. 못 깨달아서 그렇죠. And to say to, to say these things that we've been completely freed and saved from original sin, from fate, destiny, curses, and Satan and hell, all those things is a tremendous thing. It's just we don't realize. 나는 요 이번에 그 선교지 가기 전에 참, 야, 하나님이 중요한 걸 보게 하려고 일 오게 그렇게 기도하게 만들어 놓고 오게 하셨구나. And so as I was there at the, at the mission location, at the, at the place uh, in Mexico, I thought to myself, God really brought me here because He wants me to see an important thing. 솔직히 안, 안 가고 싶었거든요. And, and, and to be completely honest, I had doubts about going. 아니, 그동안 세워진 제자들이 있어서 제자들이 잘 하고 있는데 꼭 거기까지 내가 가야 되는가. And, and, and I admit, I thought to myself, we, we have so many, you know, disciples and people, like, uh, commission workers who were there and raised up and doing so many great things. Do I have to go? 아니, 일년 같은 귀한 일은 사역자가 있지 호세 같은 장로님이 있지 에? 권사님, 고권사님 같은 이다 메신저들 아닙니까? And so I thought to myself, we have precious workers like Eliana and Jose and, and Jose's wife, uh, uh, son, who are going. And, and, and I thought to myself, do I really have to go? 너무 하는 일이 많다 보니까 여기 있어도 내가 지금 시간을 쪼개야 되는 판에 야 갔다 오면 또이 피로가 좀 쌓일 건데 순간 불신앙들이 계속 오는 거야. And then I had all these momentary thoughts of disbelief, thinking to myself, oh, I have so many things that I have to do here and so many things I have to do within the ministry here at home. I'm going to be so tired if I go to Mexico and come back. 근데 그게 아니었어요. 하나님이 그래서 계속 기도하게 만드신 것 같아. But I think that's the very reason why God made me pray all the more. 그가 보니까 뭐 하나님이 너무 너무 정확하게 사람들을 준비해 놓으셨더라. And then after I went there, I realized that God had per- so perfectly prepared everyone there. 여러분 우리는요 정말 그리스도로 말미암아 해방받은 정도가 아니에요. And so you and I, we're not just simply freed by Christ. 
여러분이 하나님의 자녀라고 하는 어마어마한 새로운 신분과 건세를 얻게 된 겁니다. And we have this tremendous and amazing new identity of being a child of God. 다시 무서워하는 종의 영을 받지 않고 하나님을 하나님의 양자의 영을 받았기 때문에 하나님을 아바 아버지라고 부르짖는다 그래요. So it says that we are no longer caught by the, uh, the, the spirit of slavery, but now we've been given the spirit of sonship, and now we have the authority to call God Abba Father. 여러분 여러분은요 하나님의 모든 축복을 누릴 애 상속자라고 그랬어요. And then it says it says that we're co-heirs with Christ. 누구의 자녀가 되느냐? 그 사람 운명 진짜 바뀌는 거잖아요. Uh, and so depending on who our parents are, it can really change the way our lives turn out. 아니, 그 부모가 능력이 있는 한은 모든 거를 다 부어 줄거 아니에요. Let's say for example, if your parents have all this power and they can do do all these uh, wonderful things, then obviously they can do everything for you. 그 진짜 성교지를 갈 때마다 늘 이렇게 마음속에 하나 꼭 이렇게 하고 싶은 게 하나 있어요. And so every time I go to a mission location or a, or a place like that I, there's always something that I want to do. 요 중에서 정말 괜찮은 놈 하나 그냥 내가 데려가서 양자로 삼아 갖고 데려가고 키우면 어떨까 이 마음이 늘 생겨요. And so I always have this heart whenever I go to a mission place I, and I and I think to myself oh, what if I cho- you know what if there among one of all these children who are here what if I brought one of them back home with me and I helped raise them. 이번에도 내가 그 갔다 온 얘기들을 전부 페이스북에 실고 사진도 올리고 했는데 거기 보면 이제 그 애들이 그 사역자들 지금 우리로 말하면 9학년쯤 되는 8학년, 9학년 애들이요. 그렇게 말씀 받고 그냥 내 옆에서 같이 사진 찍고 계속 우리를 위해 기도해 달라고 하는데, 야 저것들 참 얼마나 이쁜지 그냥 마음이요. 야 요놈들 중에 하나 이게 장자 삼아야 되는데. And so among all these different children uh, and, the, and the ministry and the things that we did, I, I uploaded all the things and pictures to Facebook. But while I was there, I saw you know, all the, the, the children who were in 9th and 10th grade going and ministering to the, to the younger children and do, doing these, all these wonderful and amazing, beautiful things. And I, think to my, and I thought to myself, man, these children are so beautiful. What if I brought just one of them back home with me? You know, 만일에 그 중에 하나가 양자가 돼서 제게 왔다. 제가 모든 걸 다해서 도와줄 거 아니에요. And so let's say for example, if I if I brought one of those children back and and raised them as, um, as my own, then you know um, he I could do everything for him. 여러분, 그러나 나는 부족하지만 하나님은 전능하신 분 아닙니까? But even though I may be lacking, is not God an Almighty God? 만유의 창조자가 되신 하나님이 아닙니까? Is He not the Creator God? 그분이 내 생명을 허락하시고 내 아버지가 되셨잖아요. And so we see that He gave us life and He became our Father. 여러분 정말 하나님 자녀가 누려야 될 축복 일곱 가지는요. 여러분 생각하면 생각할수록 어마어마한 거예요. And these things that we call the seven blessings of the children of God, the more and more we think about it, the more and more we realize that it's a tremendous. Blessing. 여러분 안에 성령이 계신 거예요. The fact is the whole Holy Spirit resides in us. 여러분에게는 성령이 인도하시겠다는. The truth is, the Holy Spirit says He wants to guide us. 여러분이 가는 곳에 정말 기도하면 성령이 역사하시겠다는. Every place we go, the Holy Spirit says that He's going to work in our lives. 여러분이 움직이는 곳에 천군 천사를 동원하시겠다는. In every place we move, it says that the armies of angels will be mobilized. 왜냐, 자녀기 때문에. Why? Because we're His children. 여러분을 가로막는 흑암 시력. 그리스도 이름으로 꺾겠다는 거예요. And the force of the darkness that tries to block your path in the name of Jesus Christ it says that he will block that. 여러분 하늘의 시민권을 가진 자입니다. We're people who have the citizenship of heaven. 국의 배경을 가진 자요. We're people who have this background of heaven. 하나님은 그런 나를 통해 세상을 살리시겠다는. And God says to us through you and I he wants to save the entire world. 여러분 이게 하나님 자녀 일곱 가지 축복. These seven blessings of a child of God. 여러분 평생 동안 묵상하고 묵상하고 체험하고 체험하고 그래도 모자라요. And so we, we can think about it over and over. We can meditate on it over and over and experience it over and over throughout our entire lives. But even then, it's still not enough. 자, 이제 세 번째는요. 이렇게 구원받은 자 하나님의 자녀가 누릴 축복을 넘어선 또 하나의 축복이요. And then third, after you know, after we talk about these blessings that we have to receive as a child of God, there's more than that. 네, 그 중에서도 구별된 응답과 축복을 누리는 사람들이 따로 있다는 거죠. So even amongst all these children of God, there's a special blessing and, and grace that we children of God and, and as special disciples must enjoy. 그게 뭐냐면 전도자요 제자가 누리는 축복과 응답을 말하는 겁니다. And what we're talking about here are the blessings that evangelists and disciples must enjoy. 여러분 전도자가 누굽니까? What who is an evangelist? 여러분 도대체 제자가 누굽니까? What exactly is a disciple? 단순해요. 이들은요 내가 하나님의 자녀가 되어 구원받은 게 얼마나 어마어마한지를 정말 깨닫고 누리는 사람들이요. It's these people who really truly realize how tremendous that blessing of being a child of God is, and they enjoy it and realize it. 그리고 어떻게 하면 내가 받은 이 구원의 은혜를 
나누면서 할수 있을까를 고민하는 사람. And it's these people who think to themselves and contemplate to themselves, how is it that I can go and enjoy and spread this blessing of salvation to others around me? 여러분, 고민에 여러분이 고민하고 염려하는 차원이 달라요. And so even the contemplations, the worries and anxieties that, that they have, they're at a different level for those who are evangelists. 그 보통 사람들은 뭐 어떻게 하면 먹고 살까? 어떻게 하면 내 육신의 것을 전부 육신적인 기준으로 고민하고 염려하고 살거든요. And the average human being, they'll think to themselves, oh, what can I do to put food on the table? What can, what can I do to make a living? or become successful and they think of these worldly physical things. 근데 전도자는요. 어떻게 하면 내가 하나님의 뜻을 이루며 살까? But more so than the average person we see that a disciple thinks to himself, what is it that I can do to live for God? 어떻게 하면 하나님이 내게 주신 이 은혜를 조금이라도 나누며 살수 있을까? And what is it that I could do to even at the very least share a little bit of this grace that God's given to me? 우리 지난주에 성령의 메인 사람 그랬죠. And so last week we talked about those who were bound in the spirit. 여러분 하나님께 메인 사람이에요. We're people who are bound by God. 하나님의 소원과 하나님이 주시는 천명의 메인 사람이요. We are people who are bound into this heavenly mandate, this, this desire and calling that God's given us. 여러분 뭔가 이제 매여 살잖아요, 여러분들이요. And, and of course we're bound to something as we live our lives. 뭔가를 고민하고 살잖아요. We think and we contemplate and worry and, uh, about these different things. 근데 도대체 나는 뭐에 매여 있고 뭐를 고민하고 사느냐 이거거든요. But the issue is, what are you contemplating in your life? What are you bound to in your life? 나이가 들면 어쩔 수 없이 생기는 이마에 주름들이 있죠. And so you see these wrinkles on your forehead that you gain, uh, you know, on, even inevitably. As you go older. 그다 나이 들어서 오는 거지만 여러분 인상 자꾸 쓰고요. 고민 많이 하고 이러고 있으면 자장 여기 이렇게 생겨요. And so of course the wrinkles on your forehead are things that come with age but they're also things that come as a result of constantly frowning and, and, and thinking and contemplating and worrying. 뭘 그렇게 고민해서 생기는 주름입니까? And so what kind of wrinkles you, how many you know why do you have so many wrinkles such that you, you, you worry so much? 어떤 사람은 목사님 왜 이렇게 주름이 없습니까 그 나이에? 뭐 so, 보톡스 맞습니까 그러더라고. Some people say to me, "Oh pastor, why, why do you have so few wrinkles at your age?" 그 보톡스 맞을 돈좀 주세요. 제가 성교지 보내게. And so, you know, they, they said, oh, they, I'll, I'll pay for Botox or something like that. I said, oh, give, I said, give me the funds that you would use to pay for Botox and we'll send it off to missions. 여러분, 정말 내가 뭐를 고민하고 사느냐 이거예요. And so the issue is, what are you contemplating in your life? 하나님이 나를 구원하시고 또나 같은 사람을 나를 통해 구원하고자 하시는 것을 알고 있는 사람이에요. It's those people who know that God has given you salvation and that he desires to give salvation to others around you through you. 전도와 선교의 고민을 하는 사람. It's people who contemplate evangelism and missions. 근데 여러분, 그들을 위해서 하나님이 준비한 응답과 축복이 따로 있다는 거예요. But even among those people, there's a separate blessing and answer given to them. 먼저 그의 나라와 의를 구하면 모든 것을 다 갖다 더하시고 부어, 부어, 부어시겠다는 거예요. And that's the very reason why it says, first seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all things will be given to you. 여러분, 마태오 10장 42절에 그랬죠. And so it says this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. 전도자를 위해서 제자를 위해서 냉수 한 그릇을 대접해도요 하늘에서 상을 잃지 않을 거라고 그랬어요. It says that even if there's one thing that gives, that's given up by evangelists or disciples, those people, uh, nothing will ever uh, be, be done in vain. 전도하는 주의 종들과 제자들을 위해서 냉수 한 그릇만 대접했는데도 하나님이 그를 하늘에서 상으로 채워 주시겠다. It says that evangelists and disciples, even though they do one thing and give up one thing, it says that God will absolutely bless them from heaven. 그 얘기는요, 전도자 제자가 뭐 하나님 앞에 어떤 의미냐 이 얘기를 설명하는 거잖아요. And so what that's talking about is what, with what kind of living, uh, what kind of meaning are people evangelists living their lives? 여러분 전도와 선교는 한 사람의 인생, 한 지역, 한 나라를 바꾸는 거예요. And so evangelists and, and, and missionaries are, are, and people who do those kinds of things are people who change an entire region, an entire country. 이 솔직히 말이죠. 메시오 그그 그 동네 가서 이렇게 보는데 참 정이 가요. 사랑스럽고 정이 가고 좀더 있고 싶다 이런 마음이 자꾸 오는 거야. And so it's so strangely when I went into that uh, that village in Mexico for some strange reason it really uh, captured my heart and I wanted to be there long. 왜냐면 내가 어렸을 때 그런 환경에 살았거든요. Why because when I was younger I grew up in that kind of background. 여러분 1950년도 대한민국에 이 11월 전쟁이 일어난 다음에 여러분 60년대 70년대까지 너무 가난했어요. So even in even in South Korea up until the 60s and the 70s right after the Korean War was over it was so poor and so so desperate in Korea. 특히 여러분 그 전에 1945년도에 일본의 지배를 받고 그때 해방되기 그때 그 전에는요. 대한민국은 세계에서 가장 가난하고 배우지 못하고 여러분 남녀 차이가 아주 심한 그런 나라였어요. And so even South Korea prior to 1945 when they were they were uh, captured by the Japanese, we see even before that South Korea was one of the most poor and mo- most desolate areas of the world. 아니, 여러분 그때요. 어 한국이 너무 가난해 갖고 그때 
첫 이민자들이 생겼어요. 그게 거의 사실 돈을 받고 팔려간 거거든요. 그 팔려간 첫 번째 이민자가 어디로 갔냐면 멕시코로 갔다고요. And the um, people from South Korea back then were, were sold in, into slavery and, and the things like that. And the first place that they went, a lot of these people went, was into Mexico. 그 지금 지금의 그 캔쿤에서 좀더 들어가면 그래서 그때 1900 초기 1900년도 초기에 그때 이민 가서 거의 돈에 팔려간 거죠. 그렇게 간 사람들이 멕시칸하고 섞여 갖고 사는 거를 애니갱이라고 부르거든요. 그 사람은 이제 한국말 모르죠, 이제. And so even right now, if you go to Mexico and go further past a little bit past the area of Cancun, uh, we see that these Koreans who immigrated to Mexico, who were essentially sold into Mexico in the early 1900s, they they mixed in with the culture there, and now they don't uh, they're, they're, they don't even uh, know anything about their heritage. 여러분 그 남녀 차이 많지, 가난하지, 배우지 못했지. 여러분 그 한국을 백년 만에 하나님이 다 바꿔 놨거든요. And so these issues such as poverty, these issues such as hunger and famine and, and gender differences, uneducate or lack of education, these things like that. These are things that uh, uh, Korea has come out of the, over the years. 여러분 그때 가서 막 독립 운동 하게 만들고 여러분 막 병원 세우고 학교 세우고 그 누가 했는지 아세요? 선교사들이 한 거예요. And so all these things where they raised up schools, these things where they raised up hospitals and things of public welfare, who raised those up? They were missionaries who raised those things up in Korea. 그러니까 선교사들이 들어가서 한 개인을 바꾸고 지역을 바꾸고 나라를 바꾼 거예요. So these missionaries went into Korea and these these were the individuals who changed the individual, changed the region, changed the entire nation. 지금은요 지탱 국가가 됐잖아요 지금. And so now South Korea is one of the most developed, uh, one of the more developed countries in the world. 이게 선교사들을 통해 이루어집니다. This is something that happened as a result of missionaries. 그래서 나는요 대한민국은 지금 세, 세계에 가장 많은 선교사를 보내는 그런 나라가 된거 하나님 뜻이라고 봐요. And so even just to say that South Korea is now, you know, the country that sends one of the most most amount of missionaries out into the entire world is something that absolutely is in God's plan. 세상에 모자른 자들을 들어서 세계 살리는 일을 하나님은 하고 계시는 거예요. Because these people who are so lacking according to the standards of the world are doing God's work. That's what God's doing. 그 여러분이 전도 선교 정말 이해했다. 여러분이 받은 응답이 따로 따로 있다니까요. If we truly understand evangelism missions, then then the blessings that we receive are different. 그런데 여러분 전도자의 길, 선교사의 그 가는 길은 육신적으로 세상적으로는 사실 어려운 거거든요. And so being an, an evangelist and a missionary, living that kind of life from a very worldly perspective, it's difficult. 여러분 전 세계 다녀보세요. 피곤하잖아요. Because you know you can go all throughout the world, it's tiring. 아니, 집에 앉아서 그냥 쉬기만 해도 그냥 피곤해 갖고 절줄 모르는 판에 계속 돌아다녀 봐 바보시라고. And so even if you were just to sit around at home, then you get really tired even just by doing that. But you're going and traveling all across the world. 진짜 바울처럼 건강에 문제도 올수 있어요. And so you can have problems with your health, just like Paul did. In the 여러분, 여러분이 때로는요, 막 전도, 선교 생각하다가 내 자녀들 못 돌보는 시간도 올수 있어요. And so you know, there are so many times where even as missionaries, you can you can be so busy with the mission work that you do that you don't have time to spend with your family. 여러분이 전도 때문에 즐거움을 포기하고 뭔가를 위해서 손해 보는 일이 생길 수도 있어요. And there may, situa- may be situations where, as evangelists and as and as mission <coughs> missionaries, we can give up uh, things in our lives, things with our families. 그 정도 아닙니다, 여러분. 죽음의 위기도 올수 있습니다. And there are sometimes even as evangelism, evangelists and missionaries that even death can approach. 근데 사, 그거에 상관없이 가는 자들이 제자요 전도자라는 거죠. But those people who move forward regardless of those kinds of obstacles that we face, those are people who we call evangelists and disciples. 오늘 본문에 바울이 예루살렘을 거쳐 지금 로마로 가는 거거든요. So we see Paul through Jerusalem is going into Rome. 지금 바울이 예루살렘을 가면 결박을 당해서 감옥에 들어가고 그 유대인들이 이 바울을 이방인에게 넘겨 줄 거라는 것을 예언자를 통해서 말해 줬어요. And so we see that in the scripture today there's a there's someone who prophesies the fact that when Paul goes into Jerusalem he's going to be bound up in the chains thrown into jail and then handed over to the Gentiles. 아, 성도들이 눈물로 지금 바울 가지 마라. And all the members of the church are shedding tears and crying and weeping out saying Paul don't go. 제가 지금 죽음의 위협이 기다리고 있는데 내가 간다 그러면 여러분이 저를 사랑한다면 목사님 패스터리 가지 마지요. 이번에 가면 안될것 같아요. 그럴 거 아닙니까? And so if if I was faced with a situation where I I would die if I went into a certain area for the purpose of missions, then you know if if you guys really truly love me, then you'd hold on to me and say, Pastor, don't go. 
근데 바울은요. 감옥에 가는 정도가 아니다. 나는 복음을 위해 죽을 각오했다. But even Paul he says it doesn't matter whether or not I go to jail. I'm I'm ready to die. 도대체 이게 어떻게 가능한 겁니까? How is something like this possible? 도대체 뭐를 믿는 믿음입니까 이게? And what kind of faith is it that Paul had to have? 오늘 우리는 한세 가지 생각하려고 그래요. So we want to think about at the very least three things today. 여러분의 인생에 중요한 응답 받기를 바랍니다. I really pray that you'd receive an important answer for your life. 저는요. 여러분의 정말 복음 속에서 참된 가치 영원한 가치를 발견할 때는 가능합니다. First within the gospel if you really truly discover the the true value and real value for your life then that's when this happens. 사람이요. 자기 인생에 대한 그 가치 self worth 자기 가치를 잘 발견할 때는 사람이 행복해지거든요. People who realize their value, people who realize their self worth are people who can be happy. 내가 도대체 가치가 있는 줄을 모르겠는 거예요. 내가 왜 사는지, 내가 얼마나 중요한 사람인지, 막 이런 소, 소위 self proud 이런 자기에 대한 자부심들이 없을 때는 별로 살고 싶지 않죠. And, and sometimes when people have a, a lack of that very self worth, when some people don't have enough pride within themselves, then it becomes very difficult to live. 근데 이런 사람들은요, 그 자기 가치를 발견하기 위해서 참뭐 지나가는 육신의 것에만 집중하고 있다는 거죠. But there are so many people in order to try to discover their self worth, they hold on to the, the temporary physical things that pass. 여러분 사람들이 막 돈을 벌어 갖고 뭔가 좋은 것을 소유하려고 하는 그런 욕구들을 갖고 있잖아요. There are so many people who have this this need and this desire to try to you know become successful, make a lot of money, and possess all sorts of nice things. 사람은 소유 욕구가 있다는 거예요, 본능적으로. So 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 from from a very fundamental on basic issue instinctive issue uh, uh, perspective people have this need to possess things. 네. 또 사람들은요. 뭔가 사람들에게 인정받으려고 하는 욕구가 있잖아요. And then some people have a need to be acknowledged as well. 부모에게 인정받고 선생님한테 인정받고 친, 친구들에게 인정받고 나라 나중에는요. 사회에서 인정받고 인정받고자 하는 욕구들이 있거든요. And, and, the, and so many people have this need and this frustration to try to be acknowledged by other people whether it's by their parents or teachers or their friends or people around them. 그래서 성공하려고 그러고 심지어는 자기 외모까지 바꾸는 거 아닙니까? So that's the reason why so many people struggle to try to become successful. Some some people you know even change their outer appearance for that. 필요합니다. Of course we need that. 그러나 거기에 전부가 전부를 걸고 살면 여러분 결국은 허무해지게 돼 있어요. But if you stake your life's everything into something like that then our lives ultimately become empty. 왜냐? 이건 전부 다 지나가는 거잖아. Why because all those things are temporary and they pass. 돈도 지나가고 명예도 지나가고 여러분 그 아름다운 외모도 지나 지나가고 다 지나가는 거잖아요. And all those things whether it's money, whether it's wealth, whether it's your beautiful outer appearance, those things are temporary and they pass. 우리 교회 교인들이 다 이렇게 예? 이렇게 보면 다 멋있어요. 다 예쁘고. And so all of our church members here, they're all they're also classy and beautiful people. 나이 든 사람들 이렇게 보면 저 저분이 어렸을 땐 굉장히 예뻤었겠다. And so even when I when I look some of, at some of our elderly people, I I think you know um, that person must have been very beautiful. 지나가잖아요. 그런데 지나가잖아요. But all those things pass. 여러분 우리가요 정말 복음을 깨닫고 하나님이 보시는 내가 누군지를 정말 알때 나에 대한 참된 가치가 발견됩니다. When we really truly realize the gospel, when we really truly realize our value and worth within God, that's when we realize our true self worth. 바울은 그거를 붙잡은 거예요. That's, very, that's the very thing that Paul held on to. 여러분 저와 여러분이 하나님 보시기에 너무 너무 소중한 존재예요. So when God looks at us, He looks at us, He views us as such precious. 왜냐 그리스도께서 자기 생명으로 자기 피로 나를 구원하신 거잖아요. Why? Because by his own blood, by his own blood, uh, by his own body and by his own life, Christ gave himself. 우리가 아직 죄인 되었을 때 그리스도께서 십자가에 죽으심으로 우리를 향한 하나님의 사랑을 확증하셨다 그랬어요. Says while we were yet sinners, through the blood that He shed on the cross, that He completed our salvation. 여러분 그분이 내 안에 있는 한 나는 그분의 생명, 그분의 권세, 그분의 능력을 가지고 있는 거예요. And the, the moment that He's within us, we now possess His life, His power, and His authority within us. 그분이 내 안에 있잖아요. Because of the fact that He is within us. 그분의 your 생명이 내 안에 있는 거예요. Because His life is in us. 그분의 능력과 권세가 내 안에 있는 거예요. Because His power and His authority is within us. 여러분 정말 깨달아진다. 내가 누구냐가 발견되는 거거든요. If we really truly realize this, then we realize who we are. 여러분 이 지나가는 이 땅이 전부 아니잖아요. And so even this world that, that we live in, it's, it's a temporary thing. 영원한 시간, 영원한 상급, 영원한 생명 기다리고 있잖아요. And absolutely, there's an eternal life, there's an eternal reward, there's an eternal uh, uh, blessing waiting for us. 아니 진짜로 이 우리 제가 자주 얘기하지만 나는 이 세상이 전부라면 전 이렇게 안 삽니다. And so you know, I, I, I say this very frequently, but if, if this life that we have was everything, then I, I wouldn't live. 아니 내게 영원한 시간도 없고 이게 마지막이라면까지 그 이판사 
살지. 뭘 그렇게 양보하고 희생하고 뭘 그렇게 뭐 원보림치고 삽니까? 이 판사 판사. Let's say if there wasn't any kind of eternal eternal blessing, if there wasn't any kind of eternal life given to us after something like this, then then I just live out the most of my life here. Why? Well, for what reason would I ever have to yield or, or do anything like that? 여러분 내 본능이 알아 영원한 게 있다는 걸요. We have to understand that our fundamental being, there's an eternal thing. 그러니까 영원한 것을 붙잡고 가는 삶이 훈련되지 않으면 내 지나가는 거에 잡혀갖고 헤매고 살게 돼 있어요. And so for that very reason, if if we're not really trained to realize that we have an eternal life waiting for us, then so many times we'll end up getting caught up in the the temporary streams that pass by. 사람이요 가치 있는 것을 위해서는 에? 뭔가 막 돈을 갖다 퍼보다 안 아깝죠. And so when when something is really valuable uh, no matter how much money you throw at it it's it's worth it. 여러분 좋은 물건은 많은 돈을 주고도 사잖아요. When you have a very nice item a very worthwhile item then you can buy it even though it's very expensive. 그 여자들 뭐 명품 백뭐뭐 어쩌고저쩌고 할때 보세요. 그뭐 화장품 비싸요. 그런데 그 가치 있다고 생각하니까 안 아까운 거야. And all those things, whether it's these nice purses, nice handbags, or nice, you know, cosmetics or makeup or things like that, they're so expensive. But because you think they're they're worth it, you buy them. 근데 여러분 일 불짜리도 달라스터에 가서 일 불짜리도 별 가치 없는 거를 샀다가 내가 생각이 되면 그일 불도 아까운 게 인생이에요. But but you know, life is is something where you you can go to the dollar store and you you think to yourself, oh, I don't want to buy this because it's it's not really worth it, and that dollar becomes you know so uh, so precious to you. That's the Kind of life that we live. 여러분 바울의 유명한 고백 있잖아요. There's a very famous uh, confession that 우리 중에 아무도 자기를 위해 살고 자기를 위해 죽는 자 없다. There's no one who lives for themselves who dies for themselves. 하나님이 허락한 인생을 사는 거예요. We see that we live lives that are allowed. 하나님의 God. 축복 속에 살다 가는 거예요. We're people 겁니다. who live our lives within God's blessing. 하나님이 허락한 그 계획을 붙잡고 가야 되는 인생이에요. We're people who live our lives holding on to the plan of God for our lives that He has allowed. 그래서 바울의 그 고백이 뭐? 그러니까 사나 죽으나 다 주의 것이다 그랬어. And so that's the confession that Paul makes. He says, whether I live or I die, it's absolutely in God's hands. 내가 살아도 주를 위해 살고 죽어도 주를 위해 죽나니 사나 죽으나 주의 것이다. Whether I live, I live for God. Whether I die, I die for God. And whether I live or die, it's completely for God. 여러분 정말 복음 깨다 거기서 내 인생 가치 깨달았다. Let's say if you really realize the gospel, if you really realize the value and worth of your life, then you can live just like Paul. Second, 여러분 내가 살고 죽고 내가 성공하고 실패하는 모든 것이 하나님의 주권 속에 있다는 것을 깨닫으면 오늘 바울처럼 살수 있어요. And so living like Paul, something like that is possible when you realize that your life, your death, everything that you have, your success, your failure, everything in your life is within God's sovereignty. 그러나 죽음의 시간이 와도 상관없다는 거예요. And that's when you can make this confession. Even if I die, I'm ready to die. 왜냐? 내 성공 실패, 내 죽고 사는 게 하나님의 손 안에 있다는 걸 알고 있기 때문에. Why? Because you realize and you know that your success, your failure, whether you live or you die, is completely in God's hands. 여러분 성경의 인물이든 아니면 역사 속의 인물이든 간에 한 And so, if you look at you know people who are renowned in uh, renowned individuals in history, you see that these people uh, live their lives realizing this. 여러분 다윗이 얼만큼 고난 받았습니까? For example, look at David. How much suffering did he endure? 그러나 마침내 하나님 쓰시는 시대 인물이 되죠. Then one day, but one day, finally, God uses him as a great individual. 그리고 자기 왕 왕, 왕 왕위를 이제 아들 솔로몬에게 물려주면서. 마지막에 유언처럼 한 말이 뭡니까? And then finally as King David was passing on the throne and passing on the crown to his son Solomon, what did he say to his son? 역대상 29장입니다. Uh, he said this in the scripture. 모든 권능과 영광이 하나님께 있다. He said 1 Chronicles 21:29 verses 1 through 12 he said all glory is to God. 모든 그 사람을 높이고 낮추고 죽고 사는 모든 것이 하나님의 손 안에 있다. And so everything whether it's lowering people, raising people, giving people life or death is completely in God's hands. 쉽게 말하면 내 아들아 네 죽고 사는 것도 네를 높이고 낮추는 모든 것이 하나님의 주권 안에 있다. And so David said to his son Solomon, he said, "My son, whether you live or you die, whether you get raised up or whether you get pushed down, those things are completely in God's hands." 진짜 그 하나님 바라보고 가라. And so absolutely look to that very God. 하나님이 너를 축복하고 하나님이 너를 붙들어 가실 것이다. And it's then that God will bless you and he will hold on to you in your life. 그게 다윗이 예? 솔로몬 아들에게 남긴 마지막 유언 같은 말이었어요. And that's the very last thing that Paul that, that or that David left to his son Solomon. 왜냐? 처음에 그들이 자기 인생 속에 Because David had experienced it himself in his life. 나같이 모자른 자를 하나님이 어떻게 위기에서 건지시고 세우셨는지를 체험한 거거든. And David had experienced for himself how someone so lacking like himself was was pushed up and and raised up by God. 여러분이요. 진짜 하나님의 주권 믿고 정말 주님 바라보고 정말 
맡기고 간다. 하나님 무조건 책임지셔야 되는 거예요. If we truly understand and believe in God's sovereignty, if we truly entrust everything to him and put place all the responsibility on him, then absolutely God will take responsibility. 여러분이 정말 하나님의 주권을 믿는다면 돼요. If you really truly believe in God's sovereignty, 내 인생이 하나님의 것이다. That the fact that your life is in God's hands. 내 성공과 실패가 하나님의 손 안에. Your success and your failure is in God's hands. 주의 뜻이라면 하나님은 당신의 능력으로 나를 세울 것이다. That Lord, if it really was within your plan, would you raise me up or lower me? 여러분, 그래서 네 명철을 의지하지 말고 범사의 그를 인정하라. 그가 내 일을 네 길을 지도할 거라 그랬습니다. That's why it says in all things acknowledge him in all things acknowledge him and he will make your path. 모든 염려 죽게 맡겨 버려라 그랬. It says cast all of your worries and anxieties onto him. 그분이 he will take care of me. Why then he will take care of you. 여러분 그런 믿음으로 가다가 위기가 왔다. 죽을 병이 생겼다. 그때 하나님이 나의 오직이 되게 만드는 시간이 돼요. If within that kind of faith, if within that kind of lifestyle that, that, that a crisis or a kind of problem comes to you in your life, that's when it takes, you take it as an opportunity. 여러분, 실제로요, 진짜 어려움이 올 때는요, 다른 거 아니에요. 하나님이 나의 오직이 되는 시간이 되기를 원하시는 거예요. When a real difficulty comes to you in your life, God wants that to be a time for you to really make Christ and God your only in your life. 그때 오는 게 오직의 응답, 오직의 증거. And the things that come as a result of that are the blessings and the answers of only. 그를 유일성의 축복이라고 하는 겁니다. And those things, very simply put, is what we call this blessing of uniqueness. 불신자는 절대로 알수 없고 볼수 없는 그 유일한 응답과 축복이 여러분의 삶 속에서 나타나야 그게 세계 복음화의 길이 되는 거예요. This unique blessing and answer that comes upon evangelists, this thing is something that we must enjoy in order for us to really go out and live for world evangelism. 그런데 내가 하나님께 오직이 되길 원하셔요. But God desires for us to really become, or for God to really become the only thing. 왜 그분이 먼저 나에게 오직이 되어 주셨잖아요. Why? Because He first became our only. 나를 구원하기 위해서 당신의 아들의 생명을 주셨잖아요. It says, in order to save us, He gave the The life of his very own son for you and I. 그분이 먼저 나를 사랑하셨다니까요. He first loves you and I. 그분이 먼저 나에게 오직이 되어 주셨다니까요. And he first became your only. 그리고 하나님은 나를 그렇게 쓰길 원하셔요. And he desires to use you like that in your life. 내 마음과 중심이 어디에 오직이 되어 있냐 하는 거예요. And depending on where the center of your life, heart lies, where the center of your heart is really focused as, you, as the only thing in your life. 여러분 오늘 본문에 바울이 그 하나님의 주권을 붙잡고 간 겁니다. So in the scripture today we see that Paul is holding on to that very sovereignty of God. As he 진짜 주의를 하는 여러분 전도자, 제자, 주의 종들은요, 중직자들은요, 이 하나님의 주권 붙잡고 갈줄 알아요. This evangelist, this disciple is someone who really knows uh, uh, and Someone who enjoys this blessing is someone who really knows this blessing. Whether you live or you die is the plan of the Lord. If it is within the plan of God, if it really is within the plan of God, then whatever you desire, I will go. You don't need any kind of calculation. Third, 이렇게 성도들이 정말 주의 사람들이요 그 믿음의 길을 걸어갈 때는요 반드시 하나 응답하시지만요 먼저. 그 믿음을 테스트하는 시간이 옵니다. And these people, when they, when they walk this path of answers, first God always tests their faith. 여러분, 그 시험이 올 때요, 성경에 뭐라고 그랬어요? 오히려 기뻐하라고 그랬어요. It says, when, there's, when you have a trial or some kind of test or some kind of problem in your life, then all the more you should be joyful. 야고보서 1장 2절부터 4절이죠? And this is what it says in the scripture. James, James chapter, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. 내가 벌, 성경 구절을 얘기할 때는 얘는 그 집에 가서 찾아보라는 얘기거든요. So I'm asking you that when we talk about these kinds of scriptures, I ask, I'm asking that you go home and look it up. 뭐라고 했습니까 그 말씀에? What does it say in James 1, 2, 3, 4? 나를 강하게 연단해서 온전케 해서 하나님의 모든 응답을 누릴 자로 만들기를 원하시는 거예요. It says that he, through these kinds of trials, he makes us stronger so that we can go and enjoy all the tremendous blessings that God's given. 그래서 시험이 올 때는 낙심하지 말고 오히려 하나님 앞에 기뻐하라는 거예요. And that's why when, when there's a trial that comes to your life, don't fall into discouragement, but all the more be joyful. 아, 하나님이 나를 준비시키고 계시는 거구나. Wow, I see that God is really preparing me in my life. 나를 위해 어마어마한 것을 준비해 놓으신 거구나. That God has prepared a tremendous thing for my life. 여러분 때로 기도하다 응답 안 옵니까? And all the more some Sometimes when we pray, we feel like answers don't come, right? 그때 낙심하지 말고 하나님의 테스트를 통과하세요. In those situations, don't be discouraged, but really go through God's test. 여러분 자식도요 중요하게 쓸 사람일수록 부모로 하여금 생명 걸고 기도하게 만듭니다. And so you know, even all the more uh, you know, a child who's really, uh, really knows the value, knows how. To, uh, 
is prayed for by their parents. 그러니까 중요하게 쓸 사람이기 때문에 누군가 기도의 배경이 돼 줘야 될거 아니요. Because there's someone who's going to be used so preciously, someone has to be their prayer background, right? 지금 내 자녀가 하나님 앞에 쓰임 받는 시간을 왜 지금 연단을 받고 있다. 깨달아졌다. 부모는요. 딴 소리 하지 말고 생명 걸고 기도해야 돼요. If, if as a parent you realize that oh my child right now is undergoing a situation such that God will really raise him up to be a stronger person in faith, then absolutely that parent has to lay everything down and pray for him. 뭐 child. 조금 지금 된다 안 된다 이런 가지고 맨날 업앤다운 하고 맨날 웃었다 울었다 하는 게할게 아니고 정말 하나님의 계획을 붙잡고 내가 어떻게 하나님 앞에 기도해야 되는 결론이 나와야 돼요. And so you can't just simply be dwelling, dwell, be dwelling in these small little things where it's working or it's not working or it's happening or not happening or you just caught up in the small things of the world, but really hold on to God's plan for your child's life. 여러분 그 요셉이 어느 날 그렇게 사랑했던 요셉이 어느 날 사라져 버렸어요. But even even someone like Joseph, he was, he was uh, so, uh, uh, Joseph's father, Jacob was uh, uh, Joseph whom he loved so much. One day he disappeared. 하나님이 직접 요셉을 훈련시켜갖고 한 시대 여러분 총리 대신 만들었잖아요. Because God wanted to raise up and personally train Joseph so that he could be one day become the prime minister of Egypt. 근데 죽었는지도 살았는지도 모르는 그 아들을 놓고 그 아버지 야곱이 어떤 마음으로 기도했을 것 같으세요? But if you look at an individual like Jacob, who didn't know whether or not his son was alive or whether his son was dead, how much do you think he prayed for his son? Samuel 같은 시대적인 인물이 일어날 때는 한나의 눈물의 기도와 헌신이 있었어요. When, when an individual like Samuel, who led the entire his, uh, his uh, age of that time, uh, was raised up, how much do you think his mother Hannah prayed for him? 여러분 구원받은 자는 반드시 여러분의 시문대로 거두게 돼 있어요. And absolutely, those who, are, who receive salvation, they will absolutely reap what they sow. 갈라디아 6장에 뭐라고 했습니까? 낙심하지 마라. 때가 되면 거두. What is it saying? Galatians chapter 6. Do not be discouraged. When the time comes, you will reap what you sow. 네, 여러분 아시죠? 뭔가를 심을 때는요. 그 심은 씨가 죽어야 되는 거예요. And so, of course, when you when you sow something, when you sow something, that that uh, plant that you or that seed that you've planted needs to die. 죽을 각오를 해야 되고. That, that, that has to get through that process. 그렇죠. 죽어야 되는 거예요. That, that 그래야 그 씨가 first. 많은 열매를 맺는다 그랬어요. And it has to die such that the seed goes and ultimately bears more fruit. 그래 우리가요. 정말 전도 선교 렘넌트 십 분이는 거구나 거기에는 계산이 있으면 안 돼. And so these things, whether it's evangelism, missions, uh, remnants, and things like that, we can't just sit there calculating things like that. 여러분이 쓰는 돈이 단순한 지출이 아니라 얘기예요. So 단순... Even the, in the even the kind of money that we use and things like that, it's not just some kind of simple donation. 어마어마한 축복의 씨가 되는 거예요, 그게. It becomes an, a tremendous seed of blessing. 근데 뭐 그거 가지고 계산이 된다. 와, 이거 뭐 우리가 이거 뭐 쓸데없이 돈 많이 너무 이런 쪽으로 돈 많이 쓰는 건 전도 선교 랩런트는 무조건 씨 뿌리는 일이요. And so even things like that we, we can't just sit there calculating things. Oh, you know, we shouldn't be giving too much to this or too much to that or something like that. But whether it's, if it's really truly for evangelism missions or for the sake of our remnants and absolutely. It must, 네, 여러분, 특히 사명자 전도자는 받을 응답이 다르기 때문에요. 반드시 테스트 옵니다. And so because commission workers and evangelists have a different blessing that they must receive, then absolutely a problem will come. 하나님이 직접 아브라함도 테스트하는 거 보세요. Even look at God as he uh, directly tests Abraham. 네 아들을 나한테 달라. Uh, God is saying to Abraham, give me your son. 여러분, 하나님이 아브라함과 그 아들 이삭을 어떻게 쓰실 것인지 하나님 계획을 가지시고 지금 내놓으라는 거예요. So God knew how God, uh, God he was he was going to use his son Isaac and he set up a plan. 그 어떻게 키운 자식인데? And so how how was it uh, how is uh, what kind of son uh, what kind of way did Abraham raise up Isaac? 아브라함은 알고 있었어요. But Abraham knew. 내가 이 아들을 죽여도 하나님이 다시 살릴 것을 믿었다고 그랬어요. Abraham knew and he believed the fact that even if he were to kill his own son in front of God, God would raise him up from the dead again. 그게 뭐 아무 악이나 그런 그런 시험을 주는 게 아니거든요. And of course, God doesn't give those kinds of problems or those kinds of tests to anyone. 벌써 오래 훈련된 거예요. And this is something that he was trained in for such a long time. 그리고 중요하게 쓰임 받아야 될 사람이에요. He was used in this for such a long time. 그러니까 아이고 하나님이 또내 아들 저렇게 달라 못해 고민하지 마세요. 다그 사람 받은 응답 수준만큼 하실 테니까. And so don't don't just constantly worry to yourself thinking, oh, what what's God going to do with my son? I don't know what's going to happen with, here with my child. But uh, God, people receive blessings according to the level at which to which God wants to raise them. 어떨 때는요, 내가 하나님의 뜻대로 안 가는데 뭐가 잘될 수도 있어요. Sometimes it, it may not go according to what we want to do, but it works out well. 그거는 유혹입니다. 그것도 테스트요. And then sometimes things can go well, even when it's uh, not something that God wants. We have to understand that those things are temptations and tests as well. 요나가요. 
하나님은 지금 가서 복음 전화 선교하러 가라는데 죽기보다 싫은 거예요. So for example, Jonah, God told him to go and do evangelism and missions in this particular region. 그리고 다른 길로 도망가는데 가 보니까 거기서 배가 기다리고 있어. But he didn't want to do it. Jonah didn't want to go and do evangelism and missions, so he was going a different way, and he realized there was a boat. 내가 도망갈 수 있는 배가 기다리고 있다고요. And so jo- Jonah is thinking to himself, Oh wow, there's a boat through which I can run away. 애들 말로 아싸 잘 됐다 이런 거지. So you know, he was saying, Oh, perfect. This is great. <laughs> 그게 유혹이다. So that was a temptation. 여러분 오늘 본문의 바울에게는요 사단의 회방이 기다리고 있었다는 거예요. And so we see that uh, the, in the scripture today that Satan's uh, obstacles were waiting for Paul. 지금 감옥에 들어가고 여러분 이방인에게 끌려가야 되는 상황이라. So Paul was in a situation where he was going to get thrown into jail and be turned over to the Gentiles. 예언자를 통해 미리 말해 줬다니까요. And this was already prophesied to them. 그럼 보통 사람 같으면 겁먹고 그만둬야 되잖아요. And so the average person when they heard that they would be afraid and they give up. 에이, 아무리 주의종이라도 꼭 이런 것까지 해야 되나 도망갈 거 아니에요. And so the average person would say, "Oh, you know, of course I'm a child of God and I'm servant of the Lord, but I don't have to do this, do I?" 바울은 그걸 테스트로 분명히 알았던 것 같아요. But Paul absolutely, I think, knew that this was a test. 예, 이번에요. 그 우리 훈련 있는 그그 그 지역의 목사 말고 먼저 가서 또 하나 만난 목사가 하나 있어요. So even in Mexico, aside from our brother Julio who's there, there's another pastor that we met before. 근데 이두 목사가 팀이야. And these two pastors are a team together. 근데 이한 목사는 누구냐면 브라질에서 온 선교사예요. And so this other pastor that we had met was a missionary from Brazil. 아, 음악 진짜 잘하대요. And so he's so good at music. 난 그렇게 부부가 애들하고 음악을 잘하는지 CD 만들어서 저한테 선물 줬는데 야, 진짜 너무너무 잘해. And, the, and this couple, he, he and his wife are so good at music and they, they do all these uh, wonderful uh, songs with the children and they recorded the CD and gave it to me for 교인들 that. 제자 훈련 시킨다고요. 이만한 공간에다가 다 책상으로 해갖고 다 이렇게 테이블 만들어갖고 미리 다 등록 받아갖고 다 훈련시켜 놨더라고. And all these uh, and, and these two missionaries, what they do is because they want to raise up and, and train these these kids, the young kids, uh, they they take a room like this and set up all these tables and chairs and and take registration and train them very. 얼마나 마음이 깨끗하고 사무하고 메시지 듣고 나서 패스리 이런 메시지가 이 멕시코 살리는 메시지다. And, and these missionaries, they're so they're so pure of heart, they're so innocent of heart that they listen to the message and they say, Pastor, this is the message that needs to to be here to save Mexico. 내가 물어봤어. 당신은 어떻게 해서 여기 오게 됐냐? Uh, but I asked them, how is it that you came to Mexico? 뭐, 많은 얘기했지만 단순했어요. And we, of course, we talked about many different things, but it was very simple. 어느 멕시코 선교사가 자기 교회 와서 간증을 했대요. Uh, there was a, a missionary from Mexico who came to their church in Brazil, and they, he gave a testimony. 멕시코에 진짜 선교사가 필요하다. Uh, the, the individual came from Mexico and said, we really need real missionaries. 그런데 자기 담임 목사가 네가 가라 그러더래요. And the senior pastor who at that church said, you go. 자기 너무 잘 나가는 때였어. And this is this was a time where that individual everything was going so well for him. 세상적으로도 so, 잘 나가고. And from a worldly perspective, 자기 와이프 오늘 그 중요한 회사의 슈퍼바이저 되고. Everything was going well. His wife had become a supervisor at a very important uh, com- company there in Brazil. 마음의 결단을 하니까 그런 어퍼가 더 오더래요. But even when when they made a, a decision of their heart, that kind of offer came even more. 내가 하나님 앞에 헌신하려고 하니까 그게 오더래요. And when these people in Brazil made a decision to go and devote themselves to God, those kinds of other things came. 마음이 얼마나 more. 흔들리겠어요. So how much do you think their hearts were shaken? 깨달아지더래요. But then when they, they realize, 이게 지금 하나님 나를 테스트하는 시간이고. And this is a time when God is testing me. 그래서 다 내려놨대요. So they laid everything down. 그리고 오게 됐다는 거예요. And they came ultimately to Mexico. 참두 목사 다 엘리트들이구나. And so that's when I thought to myself, wow, these two pastors are such elite. 하나는 신학 교수로 있던 사람이지 하나는 뭐 어? 브라질에서 아주 어? 그런 그런 길을 걸어가던 사람이지. 야 이들과 손잡으면. 정말 멕시코 보고만 되겠다. 남미 보고만 되겠다. 그런 마음이 올 정도예요. And so these two individuals, one of them was a professor at a sem- seminary in Brazil and the other one was doing really well in society and, and going, you know, for, climbing further up the ladder, but ultimately they came to here and I thought, you know, if, t- if individuals like these continue to rise up in Mexico, then Mexico will absolutely be safe. 많은 전도자들이 세상적인 유혹이나 어떤 육신적인 무엇 때문에 중요한 것을 잃어버리고 갈 때들이 참 많거든요. There are so many times when evangelists, because of you know physical temptations and things of the world, they they be, they lose hold of the important things. 여러분 복음 안에서 그리스도 안에서 정말 내가 얼마나 하나님 앞에 중요한 가치 있는 인생을 지금 가지고 있는지를 꼭 깨닫. 
네. 네. 그런 우리 성도들이 되길 바랍니다. Within Christ, within the gospel, I pray that you and I and all of the believers here would be people who can realize exactly what that is in Christ. 여러분에게 정말 어려움이 있습니까? Let's say if there's a real difficult situation. 여러분의 죽고가 사는 거, 여러분의 성공 실패가 하나님의 절대 주권 속에 있다는 거 정말 믿는 그 생명건 믿음이 회복되게 달라고. And really pray that your faith would be restored such that you realize once again that whether you live or you die, success or failure is completely in God's hands. 하나님이 어떤 모습으로 여러분의 다음 축복을 위해 테스트하고 계실지 몰라요. And you don't know how God could be testing you for that next blessing that you. 또 사단은 어떤 모습으로 여러분을 유혹하고 있을지도 모를 일이에요. And you don't know what Satan could be doing to try to tempt you. 흔들리지 마세요. But don't be ever be shaken. 정말. 여러분이 표대를 향해 주님 바라보고 가세요. And so absolutely all you have to do is just simply look to God. 환경, 사람, 현실 바라보지 말고 주님 don't, 바라보세요. Don't just simply look at your your present reality or your surroundings or your environment, but look only to God. 하나님은 저와 여러분을 이 시대 살릴 축복의 주인공들로 세우실 겁니다. I really believe that God will raise us up as the main figures to save this very age. 옆 사람 축복하겠습니다. Let's bless the person next to you. 당신은 시대, 이 시대를 살릴 사람입니다. You are someone who will save this age. 하나님 감사합니다. God, we thank you. 오늘 정말 내 인생의 참된 가치를 찾아내게 하시고. God, would you allow us to really discover the true value of our lives? 내 살고 죽고 성공 실패가 하나님의 절대 주권 속에 있으며. And we realize and we believe and acknowledge that our, our life, death, success and failure is all within your hands and your sovereignty. 하나님이 준비한 그 미래를 보며 오늘 믿음으로 승리하는 저희들이 되게 하옵소서. Lord, looking upon this future that you've prepared, would you allow us to really prepare now? 오늘 우리 사랑하는 식구들이 정말 이 시대 하나님이 쓰시는 축복의 주역들이 되게 하옵소서. Or may all the people who are here today be used for your your very blessing. 오늘 정말 믿음의 결단을 하는 우리 성도들이 되게 하옵소서. Would you allow these people here to be people who can make a confession and a resolution of faith? 환경, 사람, 현실보다가 속지 않고 정말 그리스도 바라보다가 승리하는 우리 온 식구들이 되게 하여 주옵소서. Would you allow us not to simply be people who are dissuaded by different uh, their environment or their circumstances? God, would you, would you help us to look only to you? 예수 그리스도 이름으로 기도합니다. Pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.